Kerala has been making rapid strides in urbanization. Villages are becoming small towns and towns are turning into cities. Population in the cities is increasing day by day. While Kerala has recorded impressive progress in the development of basic amenities, the same is not the case with treatment of wastewater. It is for remedying this that the Kerala government has taken up a series of measures with emphasis on wastewater treatment. These measures are under the aegis of Kerala Sustainable Urban Development Project implemented with assistance from the Asian Development Bank. A sewage treatment plan set up at Mutatra in the capital city promises to propel Kerala to great heights in the area of wastewater treatment. The plant follows a process of collecting sewage generated from kitchens, bathrooms and toilets of city homes and hotels through a massive network of pipes and scientifically treats and cleans them. All the wastewater collected through the sewage network set up in Trivandrum decades ago was used for fodder cultivation in the 100-acre barren land at Mutatara. This is known as sewage farming. However, with the expansion of city and growth in population, this method has become unfeasible and impracticable. Septic tanks are also not a permanent solution for sewage treatment. Septic tanks set up in plots of four or five cents pose the threat of contaminating the water in the well, not just in the plot, but also wells in the neighboring ones. This is because of two reasons. The required measures for safely setting up a septic tank are not often adhered to, and the accumulated waste is not removed periodically. As such, the wastewater that emanates from sewage quickly mixes with groundwater. This is where the need and relevance of a scientific and large-scale sewage treatment sets in. The plant uses an advanced technology called activated sludge process with extended aeration that cleans and processes wastewater with zero negative impact on the environment. The wastewater generated from every house in the city is collected and brought to the sewage treatment plant through a network of sewerage pipes. The sewerage pipes are laid at depth of one to seven meters below the surface of the road in a tilted manner. The flow of water in the pipes is enabled by the force of gravitation. A pumping station has been set up after every six or seven meters from where the water is pumped to the next meter point. This process is repeated until the wastewater reaches the sewerage treatment plan through the network of pipes. This is the final lifting station of the plant. There are two such tanks in the pan and each is equipped with three pumps. Depending on the amount of water that reaches the plant, one or more pumps function. Through these pumps, wastewater reaches the inlet chambers. From the inlet chamber, the wastewater is directed to the screen chamber. In this screen, materials such as plastic, cloth, etc. are blocked. When the amount of such solid materials exceeds the prescribed limits, an automated rack enters the water lifts these substances and deposits them outside through a conveyor.
The wastewater then flows to the grid chamber. Here, the sewage is allowed to stand for a specified time, during which sand and other substances with high density get settled at the bottom of the grid chamber. A slowly operating scrapper deposits the substances at the bottom to one side of the grid chamber, from where they are taken outside through a conveyor. An agitator is used to prevent the outflow of organic waste in the water along with the grid. The water from the grid chamber is then routed to the aerated tank. An instrument called partial flume records the quantity of wastewater as it flows through this channel after desilting the grid. The wastewater then flows into the aerator tank through the numerous pores in the other channel. It is in the aerator tank that the major process of cleaning and processing wastewater takes place. The water is cleaned with the help of bacteria that eats away the organic waste in the water. The functioning of the aerator in the tank increases the level of oxygen in the water. The availability of oxygen and food causes the bacteria to multiply rapidly and they eat away all the organic waste in the water. The aerator in the tank is allowed to operate depending on the water's oxygen level. After the treatment in the aerator, the water is then channelized to the clarifier. As it reaches the clarifier, the bacteria in the water and other heavy substances get settled at its bottom. This is called sludge. The deposited sludge is brought to the center of the clarifier through scrapper mechanism. A dedicated pipe carries the sludge to the sludge tank. A portion of the sludge in the sludge tank is again routed to the aeration tank. This is done to ensure presence of sufficient levels of bacteria in the aeration tank. Once sufficient level of bacteria is ensured in the aeration tank, the remaining sludge is thickened using sludge thickener. Sludge settles at the bottom of the sludge thickener and the water at the top is pumped to the aeration tank via a dedicated pipe. The thickened sludge is brought to the center of the thickener using scrapper mechanism and is sent from there to the centrifuge through pipes. The functioning of the centrifuge brings down the volume of water substantially. The water that flows out from the centrifuge is sent again to the aerator tank for cleansing. During summer, the sludge from the sludge thickener is directly sent to the drying bed. Sludge may also be formed in this manner. The water from the drying bed is routed to the aerator tank. The treated water from the clarifier reaches the outlet chamber through the clarifier lounder. Here, the water is rid of microorganisms using chlorine. To clear off all and any microorganisms, the water is allowed to stand in the chlorine contact tank for 30 minutes and then let out. The treated water is drained into the neighboring Parvati Putanar canal. This water can be used for gardening, industrial and construction activities. To ensure that all the processes from start to finish are correctly followed and have produced the desired results, the water is tested in labs 
during the various phases of the process. This modern sewage treatment plant has the capacity to treat 107 million liters of wastewater every day. However, only 30 to 40 million liters reaches the plant daily. The maximum capacity of 107 million liters has been arrived at after considering the generation of wastewater if all wards in Trivandrum city are connected to the sewerage network and the expected population for 2030. Such scientifically enabled sewage treatments are imperative in all urban centers of Kerala as we work to build a healthy state free of communicable diseases.